If you guys are struggling a lot with noise in your images, I'm gonna help you reduce it. Hey there, my name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. You can find me here at Flurn five days a week making videos to help you guys get better at Photoshop and photography. Today we're talking about noise, and noise is basically a product of um, having to bump up your ISO in a digital camera, and your sensor is just having to work a little bit harder, and it produces noise or grain in your images. So I'm going to show you guys some things in Photoshop. But before we do, I just want to talk about a couple of things that you guys can do in the camera to reduce the noise. Uh, basically, the more light you have present, the less of a chance you're gonna have noise. So if you guys are shooting in an environment like your house or something like that, it's a little bit later at night, you can actually turn some lights on, like turn a ceiling light on, grab a couple of, um, you know, lamps and things like that. I also recommend if you guys are going the budget route, you can actually get like work lights from Home Depot for like 30 or $40. And those will put out so much light that you will be able to have enough light to get a good exposure. So a lot of light equals less noise. If you guys are shooting like a wedding or something like that in a church where you're, you can't, right? You can't like bring a work light into a church and be like, all right, I'm ready to shoot the wedding. Um, you might want to look at renting either a better camera or a newer camera. Let's say you're shooting with a camera that's a little bit older, like a Nikon D70 or something like that. Well, that's a crop frame sensor, so it's not going to be as good at letting light in as a full frame sensor. Full frame, I mean cameras like the new Nikon D800 and like the Canon 5D Mark II or 5D Mark III and basically anything above that. The larger sensor is just going to be better at capturing light. So. Um, I'm not saying you gotta, just gotta go out and buy one of these for like everything you do, but if you are going to be planning on shooting an event, like a wedding or something like that, and you're gonna be getting paid, it's worth renting one. Um, we use lensrentals.com, it's awesome, we're gonna link to that below as well, so if you guys wanted to rent your gear, it's really not that expensive and you can rent it for a weekend or so. Another thing you guys can do is use a lens with a wider aperture. So something like, I would recommend the 50 millimeter 1.4. It's not that expensive for like Nikon and Canon. Just about every manufacturer has one. It lets in a lot of light. So the more light your lens can let in, the less hard your sensor is gonna have to work and then the processor and you're gonna wind up with more, not noise, <laughs> less noise. You're gonna wind up with less noise. So again, anything you guys can do to allow the camera to let more light in. If you can afford to use a slow shutter speed, like if you put your camera on a tripod, let's say you're capturing a shot at night or something with not a lot of movement, and you can use a slow shutter speed, your shutter speed is going to let light in gradually and you don't have to crank your ISO up to get a lot of light in the camera over a short period of time, and that's going to result in less noise too. So a bunch of tips on how to get less noise in your images and i'm going to show you guys this is an image angela took and this is with a d700 so this actually is a full frame camera um, it's made black and white and this was taken at iso 5000 so i'm going to show you guys some things you can do in photoshop if you have some noise in your image um, personally here's my biggest suggestion before we get started with this if you have noise in your image um, and you possibly can make it black and white because Usually it just doesn't look that bad. I kind of like the look. I sometimes I even add noise to my images. So um, if you do have noise in your image and you really can't get rid of it and you're okay making a black and white, sometimes you can make like a nice romantic image out of some black and white with a little noise. It looks a little bit more like film. So that's my suggestion anyway, but I will show you guys how to reduce it in Photoshop. All right, so let's zoom into this image and you can see we do have a decent bit of noise. This is a 200%, uh, let's get back to 100%. This is a decent bit of noise in this image. There are some tools that Photoshop comes equipped with to reduce some noise. Um, there are also plugins like um, Noise Ninja. I haven't actually used Noise Ninja. If you guys have, let me know in the comment box below. And if you have any other tips on reducing noise, let me know too. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys what Photoshop has. So I'm gonna take our background layer. I'm gonna hit Command J, that's gonna duplicate it. And we're gonna go to Filter. I'm gonna go to Noise and we're going to go to Reduce Noise. Now I've tried all of these and Reduce Noise actually does work the best in my opinion. Okay, it's not going to be perfect, and the problem with reducing noise is basically it has to apply a blur. If you have like little dots, it's got to blur your image, and when it blurs it, you wind up losing detail. So anytime you're going to be reducing noise, you're probably going to be adding a little bit of blur as well. All right, let's just bring all this back down to zero, and we'll start. So basically, this is just what you have uh, to start with. Um, I just crank our noise or the strength all the way up. Basically, this is gonna be the most noise reduction possible. Strength at 10 and all the rest at zero. If you do wanna preserve your details, that's where it's gonna to try to like, you know, anytime it sees a border or a line, you can see moving it around here, it has to, like that's the original and you let go. You can also click this preview button to see the original and not the preview. 
or that that'll be over here. Go over there. There we go. The preview button. That's for you. That's for the image over here. Your real image. All right. So I'm going to bring up preserve details up just a little bit, something like five or six. And you can see it has reduced the amount of noise, but we can still actually see a decent bit of the detail in the photo. This is a black and white image, so I'm not really going to worry about color noise. Um, you can sharpen the details then after the fact. This is basically going to be like a, it's going to make it look like the image is less blurry. But again, it's going to bring that grain back in. Like you can see, it's actually kind of making the grain even worse if I bring that up. So I'm going to bring that down as well, and we're going to hit OK. So let's just zoom in and you guys can see the before and after with that. Again, this is really simple, but Photoshop doesn't provide a lot of great tools for reducing noise. That's why I spend so much time on um, helping you guys reduce it you know, in the camera. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to hit Command J again. That's just going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to go to Filter and we're going to go to Blur. And now I'm going to go to Surface Blur. Okay. And I want to use the surface blur for this area behind our subject. I'm going to choose a radius of 10 and a threshold of 43. You can play around with this. Basically, this is like how when it's going to stop. So when it's going to hit a surface is when this blur is going to stop. Maybe a little uh, smaller threshold to work. So we're going to hit OK. Now, the reason I use this surface blur is you can kind of see some areas that looks horrible, but the wall behind our subject actually doesn't look that bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer mask on this and there we go. We're going to put a layer mask on it. I'm going to hit command I that's going to invert our layer mask. And then like you can reduce the amount of grain on the wall behind your subject. Cause I mean, there's no detail back here. It doesn't matter if you apply like a really large blur on it. And by reducing the amount of grain in at least some part of your rear image, it is going to make the image as a whole look like it has less grain. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We're kind of cheating. I haven't reduced the grain a lot on our subject, but by reducing it on the background wall, you can see it makes the image as a whole look a little bit cleaner. Now I'm going to hit shift and click on this layer mask. And because this is a surface blur, any other surfaces you have that are a little bit larger, you can use this on too. So areas like, you know, neck and skin and things like that. I would avoid areas like eyes, but other areas you can definitely use this surface blur and it's going to take away some of that blur as well. So those are my tips, guys. That's just, it's a real quick and easy way. And again, if you <laughs> if you can't get rid of your noise, put it in black and white, uh, maybe put a lens flare on it, make it romantic. That that would be honestly what I would do. And I, I've seen many, many people's portfolios, professional portfolios that look just like that and they get away with it. The images are great. So don't worry too much about grain. Um, it's not usually as big of a deal as, well, to me it's not anyway, but some people it is. But if you guys have other techniques on reducing grain, whether it's in Photoshop or anything else, please leave it in a comment box below and we can help each other out get better. Thanks again for watching Florin, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll flirt you later. Wink, 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 wink.